We're glad that you have joined us today for our program. We've called from house to house. We appreciate the participation of our ladies with our filming and the beautiful home of Tony and Sandra Walker that makes uh, possible this, this wonderful backdrop. We're continuing on in our 12-part series that we have called Open Windows, thinking of windows being a means of letting in the sunlight and the freshness of air and spiritually, uh, we open our soul into God as a window and we let the Lord come in and minister to our life and we pour out our adoration upon him and bring our petitions before him. Symbolizing that all in the subject of an open window. Hope, I hope your window is open today towards the hearing of the word. This is going to be lesson number 11, ladies. We are getting right to the end of the series. And today we're going to call this one birds in the window. What are they doing there? Birds in the window. It is interesting to find uh, this particular text as I was preparing. Uh, it was rather a uh, new one for me to become aware of. And I hope that it will have a symbolic spiritual message in it for you too. Again, um, these latter messages seem to be more on the side of admonition um, many of the others that we have given in this series are more positive and other kind of uh, words of encouragement and so forth. But I hope you will glean comfort, encouragement, as well as admonition in this lesson today about birds in the window. Did you know that's in the Bible? All right, let's turn there, ladies, and you're going to find it in that little prophetical book called Zephaniah. Very close to the end of your Old Testament, chapter 2, let's look at verse 14. I will read this from the Amplified, and it's about birds in the window, okay? Herds shall lie down in the midst of Nineveh, all the wild beasts of the nations and of every kind. Both the pelican and the hedgehog shall lodge on the upper part of her fallen pillars. The voice of the nesting bird shall sing in the windows. Desolation and drought shall be on the thresholds for her cedar paneling will he lay bare. This speaks of a time of the judgment of God being allowed to come upon the people of Nineveh, that great city of Nineveh, and how it will just become desolate, so to speak, so that the, it'll be vacated, the people will be absent, and it'll be like a city that has been totally forsaken where the birds and the beasts and all will just move in and take over. And you know, that does happen in areas where uh, a society vacates an area. So this is about the birds that are making their nests and they're singing there in the windows of the households and the buildings of the town of Nineveh. Now, I want to bring out the negative side in the scripture of birds. Now, I, I love birds. I think they're wonderful. We have a lot of birds at our residence because we have a lot of trees and a lot of shrubs, a lot of greenery, and they like that. They love my front porch with a big overhang because that's where the sparrows build every spring their nests, and they come back year after year, and they sure make a mess on my porch for me to clean up. But I enjoy the songs of the birds, and we, we have some precious and beautifully colored little hummingbirds that come to certain uh, shrubbery that we have with little blossoms on it. And, and my husband purposely puts out the, the little humming, uh, feeder, hummingbird feeder with the sugar. He takes all my sugar and he puts water in it, and they come there and drink, but oh, they're just beautiful and precious. So I'm not against birds, but did you know as well as the beautiful positive side about birds in the scripture, there is the negative aspect as they are used as a symbol. Even Jesus used them as a symbol. And that's what I want to bring out in the word, not for the purpose of being negative, but again, this message is for the purpose of warning and admonition, especially to the children of God. So what are these birds doing in the window that the prophet Zephaniah referred to? Well, of course, it says they're, they're there, uh, the voice of the nesting bird. Well, a bird that has a nest, their intention is reproduction, reproduction. Uh, they intend to produce after their kind and multiply. That's their intent. 
and that is their will to do so, to multiply. Well, <clears throat> here in Nineveh, they were free to take their place. They were comfortable, unafraid, and they were there to occupy the windowsills of the, the, the buildings and the homes of Nineveh. I would like us to see in the word how that often birds typify in a symbolic sense, wicked spirits, the works of the devil. You say, oh, Carol, but I love birds and you're going to liken them to the works of the devil. Well, Jesus did. And like I say, it's not um, the total aspect about birds because we can see other things in the scriptures that deal with birds that are be more of in a positive tone. But I feel in my heart, I need to share, being we're talking about open windows, the possibility of us entertaining spirits that are very negative spirits that Satan has sent, spirits that can cause problems and havoc in our life and to our families and those that we love and those that we care about. And so we need to have discernment and be aware of these things. We can't walk this walk blindfolded and pretend that everything is just a beautiful, perfect world because the truth is it's not. There is a lot of beauty, but there's also a lot of things that we have to be leery and careful of and be on our guard. And discerning. In um, this text, I, I see how, how these birds became so comfortable and had taken their place as though they really belonged there in those windows, in those open windows. But it reminds me of how in the New Testament we are exhorted that we are not to give place to the devil. We should not give place to the works of the devil. I'm going to have you turn now, ladies. Now that you've looked at Zephaniah, let's turn over into the New Testament and look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 27th verse. I will read that first from the King James, then I will read it from the Amplified. This is the admonition of the Lord. Neither give place to the devil. You see, the window that God has given you, a means, a place of access towards him, and where he can visit and communicate with you. The Lord wants you to keep that window sill clean and ready, open and available to entertain his presence. But if we are not careful, we can let that become a perching place for the spirits that are wicked, like birds. And we would be given the devil, actually, a place, a resting place, a place to, to feel comfortable and a, a place to make it his standing ground, room for him or access for him. Are there things in our lives possibly, ladies, that is kind of like setting out a porch for the enemy to come and arrive and knock at your door? Is there a, a window that's open and a windowsill that you would allow uh, a visiting bird or fowl of the air, uh, a spirit that's sent from Satan to bring havoc against your life. You know, all it has to be is some of the thoughts you entertain, some of the things you listen to. Uh, it can be things that you entertain, especially that would pull you away from God and pull you more into the things of the world. So the scripture warns us there to not give the devil a place. Don't give him a place. Don't give him a foothold. I want to read that in the Amplified, and I think you will get what I'm trying to say here in very exact words. It says, Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. How carelessly we may live our lives sometimes and what we're doing unbeknownst or intentionally, we are giving the enemy a right away. We are leaving room for him. We're giving him a, a foothold. You know, <clears throat> the enemy can cause... Uh, uh, a disagreement to come maybe in your relationship with your children or your parents, uh, even though you may be an adult, your more aging parents or your mate, um, with another Christian, whoever you relate to, maybe there can be a disagreement come and you can let that build to the point that it becomes like uh, a nest that the enemy has collected all the little straws and build a nest out of it. And pretty soon, 
There's going to be a multiplication of the works of the enemy against you to build inroads into your life. So there the, the word is warning us, don't leave any room for him. Don't give him a foothold. Don't give him an opportunity. Sometimes the smallest things can evolve until they become big things, big problems. So we've got to be on the lookout that we're not letting something small snowball until it becomes a real issue and a real problem that pretty soon Satan's carrying it away with. He's got the ball in his hands and in his court. Be careful, children of God, that you don't leave a place for the devil. There in Nineveh, these windows were just open, no doubt. The houses were vacant, and so the birds just came and took their place, took their right away right there and said, this is my territory. How do we do that? Sometimes we do it through ignorance. Sometimes just through ignorance. The Lord said um, in the word, he said, my people perish. Why? For lack of knowledge. Yes, that's why teaching is important, children of God. You can say, well, you know, I've got the Holy Spirit and I've got my Bible and all I need is just me and the Lord. And I think that's wonderful. But also the Lord has instituted that there be ministry of teaching so that uh, persons can help you and guide you so that you won't have areas that are just plain ignorance and therefore the enemy takes advantage of your ignorance uh, a lot of people they make a foothold for the enemy through their ignorance another way we can do it is through a bad attitude oh attitude attitude sometimes we get an attitude don't we and that sums up to be an opening for the enemy to get access and begin to build a nest and what's he intending to do he's going to multiply just like the birds build a nest so that they can multiply themselves. The enemy, if he can get a, a place to, to put uh, his feet as a standing ground, uh, a right and opportunity, especially like in a bad attitude, that thing can form a nest. And it'll pretty soon it has multiplied until who know what is going to come out of it. Sometimes the choices we make is like opening a window and letting the bird come and perch there and take a place there. We're letting the enemy come because of this choice that we have made. Sometimes it's the places we go that we don't belong as children of God, and that gives the enemy a foothold. It gives him an access against us to begin to lure us away from the things of God or get our minds off in, in areas that we should not be thinking. There are just a variety of ways we need to be on guard that we do not give place or opportunity to the works of the devil. I, th I think a lot of it, as it takes place, is because of ignorance. The children of God not being informed and being aware of actually that they're bringing a lot of this uh, torment, a lot of being hassled, and all by the works of the enemy, they bring it on themselves, often through ignorance and the lack of discernment. Oh, how we need to pray, ladies, for discernment. The scripture says, try the spirits and see if they be of God, because not all things in the spirit realm are of God. You're aware that there's a spirit of man, there's a spirit of the enemy, and there's a spirit of God. And we need to uh, discern and try and test those spirits and see if they really be of God. And if they're not of God, then be really on your guard to deal with them. Now you say, Carol, you're building this all up on your opinion. No, I want you to go with me into the book of Mark, ladies, where Jesus spoke and he likened the birds to wicked spirits, the, the emissaries that Satan sends. Mark 4, we'll look at verse 4. Then we're going to drop down to verse 14 through 15 to save time. We won't read the whole text. I'd encourage you on your own, read this again about the sower, how he went out to sow his seed. It fell upon different types of ground, but there was one area that Jesus brought in his illustration, the fact of the birds being like wicked spirits in. Okay. It says, and it came to pass as he sowed, he's talking about sowing seed some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. The sower soweth the word and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Jesus is talking about the sower sowing the seed, the word of God. 
and the different type of soil, how it brings forth that seed. But where, where the path was more trodden down, it was along the wayside where people have made a path, a beaten path, the ground being more hard, the seed laid on the ground instead of going into the ground, the birds could easily swoop down and they could pluck up that seed and eat it, of course. I mean, just you, you ask a farmer. He has to be careful that the seed that he plants, that it really gets into the soil, is cultivated into the soil. If not, the birds will just come and eat it. You've just fed them a wonderful dinner. And Jesus likened that, those fowls of the air that come and steal the seed, which is a type of the word of God, he likens that to be the works of Satan, how Satan is behind that. He comes and immediately he takes that word away. He takes that seed away. And I wanted you just to know for a scriptural purpose that there Jesus used the fowls of the air, the birds of the air to typify satanic operation. You say, Carol, well, I don't want to know. I, I would just like to pretend and not know that there is such a thing as the satanic world and the satanic operations in this world. I just want to know all about the beautiful, wonderful things of God. Well, you've got to be balanced, child of God. You need to be aware of the heavenly things, the spiritual things, but you've also got to be, as they say, really wise in that you um, are aware of the the works of the enemy so that you're on your guard and you are protected. Your knowledge is often your protection. Again, we can see more scripture I want you to be aware of. I think these verses are important to be marked in your study Bibles, ladies. Revelation 18, verse 2, how that birds are likened to unclean spirits. Yes, we have to deal with uh, coming and being confronted with unclean spirits. And we need to be able to discern them. We need to know how to deal with them. It says in 18.2, it says, And he shouted with a mighty voice, She is fallen. Mighty Babylon is fallen. She has become a resort and dwelling place for demons. A dungeon haunted by every loathsome spirit. An abode for every filthy and detestable Bird. This is speaking of how Babylon as a worldly system, and it becomes so vile, so unclean, so repugnant to God that God sees it as a resort, a dwelling place where the enemy has taken over and claimed the territory and the demons are in control. And every loathsome spirit, every filthy Every detestable spirit, like a, like a filthy detestable bird, is there in the Babylonian system. Now, I'm speaking of the spiritual Babylon of the scriptures is what we're talking about. We're talking about a system of this world that's anti-God. Let me read it to you from the King James now, right? Because that first one was the Amplified. It says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. Oh, praise God, the day will come when the kingdoms of this world will fall. They will crumble at the feet of Jesus. And it says, and the, and the kingdoms of this world be, will become the kingdoms of our God. Jesus will rule and he will reign. That day is coming when this world that thinks it's so smart, so proud, so arrogant, they, and anti-God, anti-Jesus, but the day's coming when it's going to bow its knee, it's going to fall, it's going to crumble at his feet. And when that happens, uh, this, this is what the text goes on to say. It says, is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful Bird. So you see, again, the, the birds are likened to especially your, your uh, birds that are, are of the unclean nature. Um, the Lord here is likening them to foul spirits. You know, more and more we see on the rise the activity of demonic things. It seems like um, the spirit receding among the people of God in a way that they're all caught up with their, their everyday lives so much, and yet we're seeing the increase, the multiplication of iniquity that's abounding. 
foul spirits behind the things. If you listen to the news, you read the newspaper, you think, my, what a crazy world we're living in. It seems like there's so much corruption and seldom do you read or hear about wonderful, good, beautiful things happening. They seldom share that in the news, but it's all this ugly stuff. And what behind it is the works of the devil because he knows that his time is short. The scripture says that you know, he's come down in wrath because he knows that his time is short and God's going to wind this all up. And there'll be the day when that spiritual Babylon will definitely fall. But it has come to this right point and it's like a cage that's filled with all these ugly vultures and birds. You know, um, we have vultures. We have a lot of birds where I live there in the mountainous area. And it's just amazing what those vultures will pick up and eat any old filthy thing that's been hit or killed on the street. Boy, they're swooping right down and getting it like it's a delicious dinner. And the works of the devil is just as filthy. It's just as unclean. That's why the Lord said we shouldn't eat the unclean birds because of their filthiness and what they have devoured themselves. Now, I want us to go to an interesting um, story that's uh, true history. In the book of Genesis, ladies, thank you for moving along with me quickly in the word. Let's go to Genesis, the 40th chapter, verse 16 through 19. And we're going to read about an incident that involved Joseph and the king's baker, happened to be Pharaoh's baker. Um, he had a dream. And being he saw that Joseph had this wonderful supernatural gift of interpreting dreams, he wanted to share his dream with Joseph and see what Joseph thought about his dream. And it has to do with birds, okay? Now, it says in the Amplified, when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also dreamed, and behold, I had three cake baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket were some of all kinds of baked food for Pharaoh. But... The birds of prey were eating out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head, but will have you beheaded and hung on a tree. And you will not so much as be given burial, but the birds will eat your flesh. Well, this was when Joseph happened to be in prison in Egypt. And while he was there, there was another member in, in the um, prison. And he told Joseph his dream and Joseph answered it. And uh, it was a good result for him. And so the baker, he happened to be there too because he had made the king mad. So the king had him put in prison. And Joseph interpreted his dream. But it had to do with the fact that within three days, Pharaoh, instead of setting him free and bringing him back to his position as an occupation, there being his baker, he would put him to death and he would hang him and, and he wouldn't even bother to bury him. He would just have him hang there until the birds ate up his flesh. So that was pretty negative. But the, um, the, 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 the symbolism here is what I'm trying to bring out is how that in the scripture, the birds can awful sim, off and symbolize uh, wicked spirits, the workings of the devil, things that are very ugly. So children of God, we must not allow the birds to get in our window because they will bring us harm. They will bring us harm. Those wicked spirits, the works of the devil will bring us harm into our life. So we must be careful what we entertain, what you read, what you listen to, what you watch, where you go. The people you have for your, your choice company, you need to really be on your guard lest you give place to the enemy and like the birds, they'll build a nest there. Pretty soon they won't just be perching there, they'll have built a nest and it will multiply. It will multiply. Okay. I wanted you to also remember, so we're going to go back to Zephaniah 2.14. There's another thing in that text I want you to notice that we read when we began. Herd shall lie down in the midst of Nineveh and all the wild beasts of the nations and of every kind, 
both the pelican and the hedgehog shall lodge on the upper part of her fallen pillars. The voice of the nesting bird shall sing in the windows. Desolation and drought shall be on the thresholds for her cedar paneling will he lay bare. So what were these birds doing? Not only multiplying themselves, they were singing. Have you ever re heard or remember the expression about somebody being, oh, he's as happy as a lark. What are they talking about? A lark is a bird. And the way the, the lark will sing his songs. So yes, these birds were not only positioned there like they owned the place, but they were singing. They were happy. They were rejoicing. And you know, uh, they tell us that when birds sing, though it sounds beautiful to us, what it really means is that bird is warning the other birds, leave my nest alone. This is my perch. This is my territory. Don't meddle with me. In other words, they're claiming territory and they're threatening the other birds or there's going to be a fight if you come and try and take my place. So if we're not careful, we can not only have a window that we've left open and we've allowed the enemy to come and perch there and then build his nest, pretty soon he'll be singing in that window because he's happy. He has gotten right away and he has gained access and pretty soon he will be claiming territory. That's what the song is all about. And I want to conclude with Song of Solomon 2 verse 9 through 12. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he stands behind the wall of our house. He looks in through the windows. He glances through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Yes, we're in a day when it's the time when the birds are singing. They're claiming territory. I hope that they don't have the right to do that in your life, that you've not given them access. Because at the same time, the voice of the turtle dove is calling. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he bids you come. Midst all the noise and clamor, there goes the invitation out to us all, an invitation to restoration, the voice of the turtle dove. Let him be the one that perches in your window. All right, next time we'll talk about beautiful windows as we wrap this series up.